Hey there. Thanks for tuning into this month's episode of the Fraternus Forge podcast. My name is Matthew. I'm your host. Really excited to bring this episode to you. Our featured guest this month is Patrick Dwyer. Patrick is a close friend here in the Nashville, Tennessee area. And he's first and foremost a singer-songwriter in the folk pop genre. So if you're a fan of Matt Nathanson's music, Joshua Radin, Gregory Allen Isakov, uh, Noah Gunderson, I think you'll really like Patrick's music. Uh, but that said, Patrick also has like his own spin that he brings to his music that separates him from those artists. I'd say he's darker thematically than those other artists. And he also has this really creative way of weaving metaphor and story and, and arrangements together in a way that's really, really compelling. Uh, my personal favorite song of his is Rainy Day, which you can stream on Spotify with the rest of Patrick's music. I think I played that song 20 or 30 times the day that it dropped, like not exaggerating. It's, it's beautiful. It's got this string section. I might've cried a couple of times. <laughs> that might be TMI, but definitely give Patrick a listen. And this is the perfect conversation for Patrick to be a part of because the topic that we cover is modern media, specifically the darker directions that we've seen modern media take within the past five to 10 years. It's always kind of been this way, but I feel like we've hit new lows in terms of despair as a theme, violence, promiscuity, angst, vengeance, things like that are really eminent in the culture today. And we see that reflected in the media that's being created and shared. And so the topic of our conversation really centers on how do we as Catholics and as Christians interact with that landscape? How do we filter out the stuff that's really corrosive and keep that mental health foundation, keep that spiritual health foundation, keep those two areas alive in a way that keeps us pointed at Christ and pointed at heaven. So yeah, I, I'm really excited for you to listen to this conversation. I know I got a lot out of it. Definitely going to be applying some of the learnings in my own personal life. Lastly, if you have any ideas for topics that we can cover, guests that you'd like to have on the podcast, you can send those directly to me at fraternusforge at gmail.com. It's the name of the podcast at gmail.com. Lastly, lastly, <laughs> there's a special Easter egg at the end of this episode. We have our first official, unofficial <laughs> Fraternus Forge sponsored ad uh, at the end of this episode. So if you'd like to hear what that sounds like, stick around to the end of the episode and you'll, you're in for a treat. Okay, I think that's it for now. Thanks again for listening, and let's jump into it. I know we sort of like, we've touched on this briefly, negativity in music and sort of how mm -hmm. it filters into our faith walk. Sure, like, okay. Something, like a thought that I've had in my head for a little bit is sort of like, you, you've spent some time with like, with like a counselor or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was in counseling for like some, I don't know. Sad boy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sad boy stuff. <laughs> same, 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 hey, same, cheers, same. bud. Cheers. Yeah, Spin cheers. drift cheers, oh, bud. So, oh, did you hear that? Mm. <laughs> and a lot of it had to do, like healing in that space had a lot to do with reframing the narrative and like mm. reshaping the narrative. So instead of this thing happened, therefore I am a loser or I am X, Y, Z. Sure. It became more like, Hey, this was a learning experience. There was stuff outside my control, whatever. Yeah. And I learned over time to like feed myself affirmations and like actively do that when my mm, mind starts heading you. in that direction. Yeah. But a thought that I've had recently is I think music kind of functions in the same way as like narrative shaping and like actively yes. doing that. It's sort of like garbage in, garbage out. If yeah. I'm listening to something that frames me as a loser or whatever, mm -hmm. it reinforces the loser narrative. Yeah. You can wallow, essentially. Exactly. It's wallowing. Yeah. I wish my heart <laughs> was just small a kid enough. and life is a nightmare. <laughs> um, but no, but it's, and it's funny because that's the hope is that like you graduate quote unquote from right. those moments in life where like I, I totally had those but let's rewind to your initial question yeah, uh, yeah. which was uh, yes I I worked for Interscope Records for gosh 12 years dating myself um, but <laughs> hey cheers yeah <laughs> I am 63 but um, it's 
Uh, you look good. You look good. Thanks, man. Is it you know, Spindrift? <laughs> it was all the negativity in the music. Oh, cool, 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 cool. You know, eventually you just you sell your soul and you do all this other stuff. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Looks good on a resume, too. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Dedication. It just, it just looks good. It just looks good, <laughs> you know? It, it's funny because I, I started working for them and doing video production. So I mm -hmm. did a lot of editing, um, a lot of shooting, music mm -hmm. videos, um, behind the scenes, making of the videos, mm -hmm. artist promos, album promos, EPKs for like artists that they had just signed. And, you know, as a kid, basically, that mm -hmm. just kind of fell into this, mm -hmm. I was really Did, fortunate, really. Well, um, how old were you when you started? Uh, like 22. 22, wow, mm -hmm. holy so, cow. And I moved to LA from Montana to pursue my own music. Yeah, so yeah. at the time, um, there was like talks of me getting a record deal and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, that just did not work. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole separate podcast yeah, yeah. of all the uh, other things with my own music. But yeah. in terms of the video stuff, yeah, uh, I found, I consider myself very fortunate that yeah. I really was just kind of like, all right, God, like I want to do something that is artistic. at least re artistic yeah. and related to what I related to what I do. And you do do your own music now. I do. Which yeah. is like, yeah, yeah. That's kind of where I moved to Nashville. Small, and, small plug. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I had my third to last song finished that up today. That's awesome. Uh, with my producer. Uh, good times. But no, I was, I was really excited though, because getting a job working for a major record label and then getting to work with a bunch of huge artists was, I mean, it was very alluring for me yeah. because I was kind of like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Yeah. Even though I yeah. wasn't doing my own music, I think I got really wrapped up in mm. the world of, and, and distracted enough mm -hmm. to be kind of like, oh, but I'm still like in it though. Like mm -hmm. I'm still doing mm -hmm. music stuff, um, even though it was the video side of things. It sort of like let you delay like yeah. what you felt like you really had to do, like, hey, this is good enough, or for now right. it's good enough. Exactly. And then yeah. music kind of was more of a hobby that I still lied to myself and said that I was taking seriously. <laughs> um, but honestly, probably my first experience of feeling like very kind of like, huh, like this feels off. Like okay. why, why does this, like why do I feel icky okay. is... I did the making of the video for Lady Gaga's Bad Romance. Oh, snap. Which, again, dating myself. But Wait, you did the making of? Like yeah. the behind the scenes yeah, sort of? This the is scenes. what we were doing. Wow. Yeah. Are you serious? Uh huh. Yeah. That's the one where she's like, is that the one where she's like coming, or is that Poker Face where she comes out of the pool? That's, with the like poker, the... But that's Poker Face. So this okay. is the one where she's in like that white room and she's being bid on by that's like right that yeah Russian mobster whatever and diamonds are falling everywhere i and, do know that video yeah, yeah yeah it's the rah 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 rah, rah yeah, yeah that one so that's wild wow. i just remember working on that video being like this feels dark or just it feels okay it di i didn't feel good and then i was kind okay. of like why you know what is this well i'm like they're like hanging like a goat head on the wall or other things where I'm kind of like yeah interesting interesting choices interesting styles here mm -hmm. and and what's weird is I just I feel like I kind of just plowed through that video mm -hmm. and then just kind of you know just kept doing mm -hmm. just my job until it just became a job okay um, but then you know where I feel like it's easy sometimes to become oblivious to something when you're desensitized to it mm. Because then, yeah, after that, I went on to do telephone, mm -hmm. behind the scenes of telephone, and fast forward all the way up till like a couple of years ago, doing a bunch of stuff for Billie Eilish, and that was very, very obvious mm -hmm. of just kind of like, okay, this is just... A, like, overtly dark. Overtly dark. And yeah. Because I remember, like, and it's good that you, it's good that you sort of landed on that, because I actually had this conversation with somebody recently. I feel like, I don't think this will be news to anybody, but I do think that the level of darkness and i mean just like promiscuity and and like i'm gonna sound like my dad for a second mm -hmm. like promiscuity like it's mm -hmm. bad you know it's good. bad music <laughs> bad. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah yeah like it, it, it's been ramping up like since mm -hmm. music's been a thing you know like each generation sort of like pushes the bar a little bit further mm -hmm. and i remember thinking gaga was dark when she first came out mm -hmm. but it was never like it just felt like a different flavor of pop music. Like this right. was like this is clearly meant for like the emo kids. Right. But it was never something that I was like, wow, I'm concerned about this person versus like, 
Billie Eilish is like a whole nother level. Right. And like young girls are listening to that and mm-hmm. and, and like I've listened to it too. There are guys who listen to Billie oh, Eilish sure. as well, but it's like, mm, do you really want that in your brain? Right. You know? And that's kind of where and I remember we were kind of talking about that. Things that things I still I think can be very negative, even packaged in like a um in in, in a shiny package, like mm-hmm. Ariana Grande or something yeah. like that. Where you know, I feel like in some ways it's just as sinister yeah. because of the messages that are like when um, she did that, uh, what should we call it? That terrible song. <laughs> it's like, what? I got <laughs> it's like she like redid the raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. And she oh. like kind of sampled that. Okay. And oh my gosh, the, the, the title of the song is Escape, Escapes Me. But I mean, okay. the whole thing, and it's nothing new, but right. it's just like all about materialism and all yeah. about being basically just being super, super fake and how much she loves it. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. and again, I think, you know, like something that you touched on before, which is I just the, the junk in, junk out thing. Yeah. Something that I found so ironic about L.A. is that everybody that or not, it's not just L.A. Like this, the world's not exempt to this, but mm-hmm. L.A. was just like a very good example of it, I, I suppose, is that everybody was so concerned about what went into their bodies, what they were consuming mm-hmm. in their mouths, where it's kind of like, oh, is this gluten-free, free-range, locally mm-hmm. sourced, um, sure. grass-fed, you know? And <laughs> Were the chickens sung too? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What were their names? But I think that, and, and in some ways, I you know, we can roll our eyes about it, and t- to a degree, it does get, too, it's too much. Sure. But I think the intention behind it is, there's an orderedness, I think, about the intention, which is, Okay, I recognize mm-hmm. that what I consume is going to Matters. manifest itself in my body. And yep. and I think it's actually a good thing for people to be more conscious about what they're putting into their bodies mm-hmm. because they get that correlation. Now, mm-hmm. what's funny, though, is that people do not handle what they consume with their eyes and ears the same way. Mm-hmm. And they don't look at it in terms of like, oh, junk in, junk out. But they're like, oh, that's fine. I can watch mm-hmm. this or I can mm-hmm. listen to this. Mm-hmm. And, and just be like, mm-hmm. but I'm like, your soul is going to have a heart attack. Like mm-hmm. your spirit is worn out by this stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm somebody who like I was totally uh, and to some degree can still make a lot of excuses for myself and what I watch and what I listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was having a good conversation with uh, with actually with David when he was over here mm-hmm. about that exact thing about mm-hmm. being like, I think, yeah, a lot of it depends on the person, the mm-hmm. their discernment, their temperament. You know, if they're listening to it from like, or listening to or watching something from a a certain place. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I feel like a lot of, especially if it's negative music, Mm -hmm. if it's like, it's kind of a mantra if you think about it. If you're just listening to something on repeat, Mm -hmm. let's just take the Billie Eilish song, Bury a Friend. Yeah. The chorus, she's literally chanting, I want to end me. I want to end me. I want to end me. And I'm like, People are singing along with like the things mm-hmm. that we say right. out loud right. matters. And yeah. if you're like just blasting that song on repeat and just yeah. chanting those words, it's like, uh, yeah. is that, and it's the thing is, I'm kind of like, I'm not here to like lambast anybody for listening to it, but it's kind of like, is that the best thing right. that we could be doing? Right. Or is there something, is there something better? Because I mean, like just to take it to a like dark space for a second, like mm-hmm. I wonder how many suicides that song caused how many and like it's it'd be impossible to prove unless like somebody had like a thousand plays on it like this person had a thousand plays and their next most played song was like three or something like that um that's on that note actually yeah yeah go ahead um we had done some interviews with her because the label was they had her like team up and do yeah, this, coming like, back little, to Interscope, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little thing, like, yeah. about like suicide prevention, yeah. And had her make a state, like, fil- we had to film her making a statement about it, because like some fans had written in, saying that like, oh, like her music had inspired them to kill themselves, in like as if it was like a good thing. Now, it was culpability is, you know, an- another thing. Do mm-hmm. I think that Billie Eilish made people kill themselves? No, right, like. Right. People are going to do what they're going to do. However, do you want to be the one who plants that seed? Right. Are you encouraging or are you, yeah, exactly, planting seeds? Yeah. Exactly. Is that the best seed Mm -hmm. you could be planting? Is that the best thing you could be doing? Did you, what did she say in that interview? I'm curious to know, like, what her philosophy on her music is, if there is Um, such a thing. I'm not even sure it was much of a philosophy. Like, the last thing I did is edit a lot of the uh, um, promo material for 
her album, uh, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Mm -hmm. Which is also just kind of a startling thing to have name your album. Yeah. Where she's got like, and she's sitting on a bed with like vacant like demon, demon eyes. Face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh God. Oh, well. Like, um, I think something about it, like, thematically is compelling. As sure. A, as, like, a sad boy. I oh, definitely, totally. I definitely was drawn to mm -hmm. the record in the first place, because I was like, dang, this is cool. Mm -hmm. It's, like, black background. Usually, if it's a black background, sign me up, you know? Oh, I would have <laughs> totally... This would have been, like, my, my favorite album in high school. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 like, sonically speaking, I think it's, it's cool. really well done. Yeah. I don't know... Her brother is a genius. He's her producer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phineas, they just did it in the bedroom. It's like crazy, and it's and it's like it's a distinct sound. But again, coming back to mm -hmm. lyrics, I think temperament really matters. Mm -hmm. I think in general, it's probably not good to put something like that into your brain. But especially, I I soak stuff, oh, yeah. and I like ruminate on stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, if a thought like that comes in, I'm gonna like spin on it. It's yeah. It's surprising how often during the course of a day I'll catch myself singing like something dark. Do you know Queens of the Stone Age at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Queens of the Stone Age is one that comes up fairly often. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a song off their Lullabies to Paralyze record, Everybody Knows mm -hmm. That You're Insane. Uh -huh. And like that song will just like get stuck in my head. It's like, everybody knows that you're insane. And I'm like washing the dishes, folding laundry or something. I'm yeah. like, why am I singing this right. right now? Why do I, do I want this to be know. the thought in my head right now? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Cause, and, and I, I don't, I, I don't mean to like pick pick on poor Billy. No. But she's like low hanging fruit right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't it's just mean to, an easier yeah. example, I think. Yeah. Of just kind of like, yeah. of those kind of things. Because to me, music is almost like the closest that you can get to God in a sense, mm. that only we can really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And when we're creating it, it's like we're really sharing in his glory because you're literally making something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. You are, you can hum a few notes or like spin something out of thin air mm -hmm. and then it can affect somebody. Like someone can feel. When you think about that, that's like startling power, which mm -hmm. is crazy. But and it's, it is crazy that like, God shares that with us. Mm -hmm. And I love the whole idea of, I can't remember what saint it was. I was saying this, like when you're singing, you're praying twice. I have heard that before. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But on that, on that same, this, the flip side of that coin, I think what the devil does, which is so good at doing, is mm -hmm. all he does is invert, mm -hmm. turns things inside out. Mm -hmm. And something can still sound mm. great and sound beautiful and sound awesome. But if the message is negative yeah you're like in this echo chamber and like and it's easy like when you're in high school when you're mm -hmm. your emotions are just so much more raw and you're right. just kind of like oh no one cares about me and right and it's weird it almost like feels good to feel bad yeah um, there's like a, cath a cathartic sort of sense yeah, that comes along with it because you feel special you're like oh nobody knows no one knows what it's like to be me have you read till we have faces i so my friend left her book um and she was constantly going on about it uh -huh. i needed to read it and so i guess i uh, can read it now because she left her book with me. i, I want to i want to come back to this idea of like music sort of giving us a share in god's glory because i think it's beautiful and i like i don't know that i have words for it yet so i might partly be stalling in order to give myself time to come up with the right words but i also really am excited about this tangent because what you said about like it's good to feel sad or, yeah. or something like you sort of I want feel to feel good sad to feel bad sometimes yeah like there's a moment in that book where the lead character gets drunk and like, like without giving anything away, there's like this tragedy that happens to her early in the book. Mm. And she's drunk like maybe 20 or so years later, like after the fact. Oh, and, and she's she been like, drunk for 20 years. Yeah, she, or, or was it just that spot where she got drunk? Spring drunk? break C.S. Lewis <laughs> style. Yeah. Well, screw tape's got nothing on me. <laughs> <laughs> C.S. Lewis, Keystone Light. Get out of here, Aslan. <laughs> More like Aslan. Yeah, right? Did you ever see the PBS special? No. Where, like Lucy's, she has the biggest overbite. She's like, Aslan. <laughs> Aslan. <laughs> That's funny. Just watching her try to say it was wonderful. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Yeah. Uh, but in, in, that, in that scene where uh, that lead character is drunk, 
she's like, and now I understood like why people drink because in drinking I, and I'm like paraphrasing here, but I sort of, I sort of entered into like this great sorrow and I was somehow noble for feeling it. Right. Yeah. That's a beautiful way to put it. Yeah. And I feel like that's in my mind, at least that's what I'm talking about. Like Mm -hmm. the kind of same that noble, there's like this nobility to whatever it is that you think is going on with you. And it's isolated. Ultimately it's isolating. Say, um, say more about that. I, well, I think I know what you mean. Cause again, it, it's just kind of like you are an other, you know, I mm-hmm. feel like when you're feeling bad about something and mm-hmm. then you have, let's say shows or music or anything to reinforce that, mm. then it, it only furthers your isolation. I think it's when people, when, when that happens and you've grown accustomed to it, mm-hmm then that becomes your identity. Mm, The identity as another. Yes. And it makes you, and it makes it hard to relate to other people and Mm. furthering the narrative that Mm -hmm. I am different Mm -hmm. and nobody knows me. No one understands me because Mm -hmm. honestly what the devil would love to, for everyone to believe is that they're, they're alone. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it happen. I mean, I've dealt with it for a lot of my life Mm -hmm. and I fought, it a lot of my life and so mm-hmm. like I'm it's very easy for me to recognize when other people are doing it mm-hmm. and I've kind of made it a little bit of a mission to kind of try to notice those things and mm-hmm. hopefully try to like encourage nudge people, people back. to kind of get community or you know make mm-hmm. friends or, or mm-hmm. kind of get outside of themselves and get outside of their head mm-hmm. um, because what do, do you feel like and, and this is this is great because like I, I I know what you're getting at here do you feel like the music itself becomes like a substitute for friends. Yes. In a weird way. I mean, yeah. for me, in my case, in high school, it definitely yeah. was. Music was my friend. And, yeah. But what I wanted was real relationships. Right, right, right. But right. I was kind of like, no one understands me. And, yeah. And honestly, like a lot of the people didn't. But I also didn't, I, I, I wasn't putting myself out there. Mm-hmm. I wasn't confident enough to put myself out there mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that people did see me. Mm-hmm. And I was also like, you know, just scared of everything. And I feel like that's a lot of it too, is fear mm-hmm. of people. I think that they don't do it because of just something in people's minds. It's like a fear of rejection. Yeah. It's like, what if I actually show them who I am a little bit and yeah. they don't like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'm, you know, oh, why did I even try? I'm going back to my, yeah. you know. CD player. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My sad, sad boy I, CDs. I, I, I totally agree on like the, the, the fear of, of putting yourself out there. And that might need to be a separate podcast in and of itself. Because yeah. like that's something I definitely struggle with. Like, but you're really it, good at it. Hey, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, man. So you've, you've done some work, bro. <laughs> thanks, bro. You too. <laughs> you put in some old work. Yeah. But I, yeah I, I, but I think, I think something like in how that relates to, to music... And like, so we're, we're comparing music as like a coping mechanism or like a hiding place from like interacting with real relationships. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that the reason music can become that sort of hiding place is that like going back to your original point about music being like, this is in a way like a share in God's glory or like we touch something transcendental and there's mm-hmm. like, there can be big feelings, whether they're sad yeah. or happy or angry or whatever like there's big feelings in that and in relationships and friendships it's not always the case like yeah. it, things are messy things mm-hmm. are are boring a yeah. lot of the time like you got to go make friends like, and like I'm so bored right now <laughs> right 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 I, I, uh, like can we be done <laughs> I, I i don't know like do, do you ever feel like just like run by your emotions like what's going to spike What's Someti- going to spike? Um, Give me that surge. Yeah, you know what I'm so, talking about? So, sometimes, yeah. Like okay. I used to be a lot worse with that. Yeah, you kind of almost like want that sort of emotional experience mm-hmm. because maybe the rest of your day is just, yeah. you know, yeah. blah or, or whatever. Yeah. And and sometimes it's easier to feel the negative things than it is to feel the positive things. Or, or feel like, feel something big and negative. Oh, yeah. As opposed to just like something mundane. Oh yeah, or something just dated. So like my LA, like th- like I mean, I would like Lana Del Rey's first album. Pff, I was on like repeat, and that was like so depressing. Yeah, but I Isn't loved it, like, it. Born to was, Die or yes, something. It was Born to Die. Born to Die. <laughs> and then, like talk about just like 
And most of those songs are just about being like, just being on drugs or just dying or, you know. Yeah. And, but I like ate it up. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, mm, this just feels good. I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And again, not to pick on like any one artist, but but even then sometimes I was like, I think I need to like hang this up for a little bit because mm -hmm. I think eventually you do start feeling it if you start paying attention. Or I'm like, and when you eat too much junk food and mm -hmm. when you're kind of, you feel gross. Mm -hmm. Where a lot of times when you're like, mm -hmm. okay, I've, I feel like, I feel, I just feel gross now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel mm -hmm. like I'm just like, I'm going to like just get a big long extension cord with a toaster and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just the most dramatic, <laughs> dramatic LA in my yeah. 1920s bathtub. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so. Jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Exactly. <laughs> But that's where it's, it's so interesting when I was just kind of looking into things, just being like, huh, I think that a lot of really great artists or artists with a lot of influence mm -hmm. um, discovering that they used to be or were raised Catholic. Oh, snap. Yeah. Where I'm like, huh, that's very interesting. Who, who are some examples? Um, Lady Gaga. Um, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Big Catholic roots. Really? Um, she's like really fought. Like to cut. She's is she, had like she's not Catholic eternal anymore. battles. If you talk to her, she'd probably still say she's Catholic. Right. Eh. But in the sense that like nah. Pelosi's Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. But even still, like in a more zany way. Um, okay. But I, yeah, just a, a there's this a lot going Jesus on there. This is my Jesus chakra crystal. <laughs> yeah, still there's a lot going on there. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. Madonna. Um, really? Yeah. Catholic roots. Lana Del Rey, Catholic roots. Really? Um, Fergie per apparently still still practices. Um, wow. But, you know, it's just kind of like, it's all these artists that sometimes you're just like, you? Is this your music or where is this coming from? Interesting. And a lot of times I feel like you look at just throughout history and like some of the greatest artists, mm -hmm. like some of the, like just these amazing Catholic art that exists mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and especially musicians mm -hmm. and again like kind of going back to my other point of just like the inversion of everything of how like I feel like not that that just I know you would probably love nothing more than to take somebody uh, who's Catholic yeah and take and, whatever great art that they have and yeah twist it and then twist it because it's it's crazy like they're and, and there's so many other, like, those are just the people off the top of my head that I could think of. Yeah. It sort of goes back to like what you were saying earlier about your time at Interscope, where mm -hmm. maybe for them, this opportunity to connect with people on like, if not a spiritual level, like deep emotional, personal mm -hmm. level, change lives, shift narratives becomes just a job. Yeah. Where like Lady Gaga is like, I'm going to go be in this super dark music video because that's my job and like that's what sells yeah. plastic. Yep. And and what's weird is that like I do give I tr I try not to like really judge anyone where they're at because working in that industry long enough and making a lot of friends within it mm -hmm. um and getting to know some of these people as like just a a friend or just a person mm -hmm. it's they they're not they don't they're not really that different in terms of like our mentalities of how we see the world and and, mm -hmm. and how you know we interpret things because mm -hmm. at the end of the day they're people just like you me and everybody else mm -hmm. but it's just i think you project different things onto them and mm -hmm. and i think that um like they must what, be a different species look right. how many views on youtube they have right where i'm just like they're insecure yeah. and they have all the same like like some 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 vary and you're just mm -hmm. kind of like i think to some of them it is just a job they have become so desensitized to it mm -hmm. where i mean i know i did for my job mm -hmm. and so the question is fair but it's also in my mind like okay we also have to remember that they, they don't think the same way mm -hmm. um where one of my friends who is a um well-known singer who i will not say but okay they did a lot of that for their job in terms of just like 
being scantily clad, dancing and doing the whole bit and the music videos sure. and, and all that. Typical nine to five. Yeah, typical nine to five. Yeah, Typ <laughs> but for her, like it, it totally was. It actually was. And so when I tell people, I'm like, no, she's actually like a strong Christian. She loves she loves Jesus. And they're like, how can she love Jesus and do that? Right. I'm like, she, it's in, in a weird way, it's like, she. I don't think she realizes. I don't think she knows. Mm. Because it do, it is kind of like, a, okay, this is the deal. This is the gig. You show up, all right, and does this look good? All right, cool. All right, cameras are rolling. All right, cool. Boom, 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 boom. All right, cool. And it's just so, like, yeah. it becomes so root. Yeah. That is, which I'm not saying that's good. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a good thing. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, that is the environment that the music industry has created. Mm -hmm. is the, and, and that's what sucks, mm -hmm. is that people get sucked into these things and Mm -hmm. believe these lies and then eventually it's just kind of like okay this is what we're doing today all right cool they're so into the lie that they don't even perceive it as a lie anymore ah, it's just like oh which this is, is what we're doing which is okay. doubly dangerous because if you can't even see the lie mm -hmm. like how can you know yeah like that you need to get out of something right and so i always like pray that i'm just kind of like oh my god i hope that there's some sort of lack of culpability there just in right. some way of just being like their conscience is just so other side of the tracks now mm. however i think that there are definitely people who intentionally mm. who are very much like interested in promoting evil and mm. there are uh, and and it's and i never used to be one of those people that's like oh you know like play this song backwards and it's, like, <laughs> it's but i'm like you don't even gotta play shit backwards anymore like you could just it's play play it's the song right it's there. right there yeah 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 and like especially after the whole debacle that happened to that travis scott concert and the you'll it, have to catch his, me up i don't i don't know what oh, happened there dude so like long story short he had there was like uh some festival and um it was very dark like people people got trampled to death and like people were trying to stop to to like to stop it for a long time but like no one would help and, and it was just like and in a weird way it was it, it was like quote unquote prophetic or whatever because um he's a rapper isn't he yeah but people um, got trampled to death at a rap concert yeah that doesn't yeah. make sense like, I if could, you look i know i could see that at like a slayer concert or something a rap concert mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense i know it's 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 the big thing um what was he what was he doing like so he was just carrying on with the show when I guess like people were just screaming and trying to like, they were like being pulled under. I like read this girl's account of what happened. Yeah. Like one of the girls that was there and it yeah. was like terrifying. And what's crazy is that if you look at a lot of the, like the, the festival setup, mm -hmm. um, the, like the, the construction of just even all of the, the architecture that kind of went into the whole thing. Yeah. Mimicked images of, like Satan and hell and de like so many demonic things. Like it's, it's crazy. Like the, like hit the entrance to um, mm -hmm. the festival was like uh, this big version of his head, like in his gaping mouth open. But if you, if you look it up, it's yeah. actually startling. What's the, what's the festival? Um, just look up Travis Scott festival. Okay. Deaths. <laughs> this, uh, this actually ties in to something that I was, thinking about bringing up earlier. Um, so we mentioned a conversation that you had with David previously about this sort yeah. of thing. Has he shared that podcast with you, the Padre Pellegrino, where he talks to the previous high wizard, like the ex-high wizard? No, but he's told he told me about that. It's a really good, it's like, it's out there. It's real out there. Mm -hmm. But hearing some of the stuff that you're saying right here makes it sound a bit more plausible. And I mean, yeah. like, we know Satan's at work in yeah. the world today. Yeah. And and for someone to be like, yo, I will give you my singular, unique, immortal soul that God created from the foundations of the earth in exchange for a billion Twitter followers. Satan's going to be like, <clears throat> uh, yeah. yeah, deal. Or like, yeah, little Nas X or whatever, selling like shoes with real blood in it and like right. it's a whole yeah i don't know if you heard about that i did not but there's hear just this. like a, there's a slew of other things out there right that's just like some people are like straight up and it's weird like satanism is popular it's mm -hmm. become a popular thing right and in my mind i'm kind of like what are the steps that led us to that point mm -hmm. 
It's not that yeah. it just was like, boom, and there it is. Yeah. It's kind of like it had to have been yeah. a, a cumulative effect of a lot of a lot of different things. And so yeah. I'm like, I think a lot of that has to do with the stuff that we are consuming entertainment wise. Mm-hmm. And like and David and I were talking about like he just watched an episode um, of The Boys and <laughs> I heard that's like pretty raunchy. Yeah, and apparently like the first episode of season three is like they're just like trying to outdo themselves. And, oh really? Oh yeah. And he to like a whole nother level. Oh, and like we yes. are aware of how I don't even want to say it on this thing. Like Probably I was shouldn't. just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's we, how in the world we keep it PG around oh, okay. here. Okay, <laughs> I just did one S word. <laughs> I feel like a super villain, like pe- petting my cat. Being like, <laughs> yes, evil is taking over the world. <laughs> As he tries to bite me. Dollars. <laughs> don't bite me. Ow. <laughs> yeah, I. That's a really good question. How did we get to this point? Why is Satanism and just like darkness, especially the real dark stuff? Yeah. For example, uh, Nine Inch Nails. Oh. One of the darkest pieces, possibly the darkest piece of music I've ever listened to. And music video I've ever seen. Uh, Closer? Closer. Yeah, Closer is real dark. But I was thinking like, well, it's the album that song is on. Oh. The Downward Spiral. Have you heard that record? Uh, bits and pieces a long time ago. So just because even back then that was too dark for me. It's it's like it, it yeah. made me feel gross. Listening yeah, to it. Yes, yes, I was yes. like, I don't. This myself feels gross. It needs yeah. an hour. I wouldn't listen to Marilyn Manson, and Nine Inch Nails still made me feel worse than Marilyn. Really? <laughs> Seriously? Did, did you know that they were on the same label, like Trent Reznor? Oh yeah, signed? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, was, they were Interscope. Oh, oh really? Yep. <laughs> OG Interscope. Yep. Jimmy Iovine was just I mean, that man has got a lot to contend with later. Yeah, it's like. I agree with you. Like when I when I listen to that record, I always felt real gross afterwards. Yeah. Because it's essentially like they call it the downward spiral, and it's essentially this guy who like starts at the beginning of the record and just spirals and just goes down and down and down and down. He dehumanizes himself, other people. He oh like doubts God, curses God, and ultimately takes his own life at the end of the record. I mean, that's the ultimate evil, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And and how do you get there? Isolation. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. like the lie becomes an echo chamber. Yep. Yeah. And then you just get, um, and this is like an offshoot. Yeah. This is, so when I was in film school and in college, like mm-hmm. I was in a doc, like a, one of our classes was a, a documentary class. And uh, of, co- uh, of course, I was like, so, I'm so into spooky stuff. And, uh, of course, I was like, oh, I'm going to do my documentary on something really interesting. I'm gonna okay. do- I'm gonna- I never played with one okay. personally, and I never oh, wanted no. to. But I was like, I'm going to do a documentary on the Ouija board. It's kind of like a cautionary tale of okay. like, this is probably why you shouldn't. Probably not. But yeah. the part of the intentionality behind it was to kind of just like, I was just still fascinated by it. Oh, so this is a cautionary tale, but it's really an exploratory. Patrick yes. wants this to know. This was what's going my on. like. I'm making a horror movie, oh, and so yeah. I just remember like going around to so many people and interviewing them and being like, you know, finding people who had had experiences who had played it, and then mm-hmm. just talking to them about, you know, how, yeah. how did you know what was the first time like what was the first time you'd ever used one and mm-hmm. and why and then what what happened basically, mm-hmm. and I was. Really, honestly, just shook because, and I and I never I never completed it. I never finished it because I started feeling really yucky and mm-hmm. feeling really. I was like, okay, now it's starting to actually. I'm starting to kind of get scared about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't like this. Yeah. And I changed my topic to uh, spaying and neutering your pets. <laughs> so I, I literally filmed a dog get neutered um, instead. So so wholesome. So wholesome. So, so, so wholesome. I went from scare to just gore. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, I'll settle for gore. It's fine. <laughs> The cheap, the cheap seats. But um, the, uh, I just remember being like, oh, this is super scary because there were similarities between everyone's stories and mm. nobody knew each other. And when I started noticing similarities, I was like, whoa, uh, there must be something to this. Mm. And this isn't just like some fake thing that like everyone's just making their stories up or that they've all like corroborated and like called each other and were like, yo, Patrick's doing this. We're going to all have the same story. I was like, there's no way. There's no way. Yeah. Um, but one of the biggest themes that I remember was that after they were done with it, 
and they wanted to get rid of it, they couldn't get rid of it. Inexplicably, apparently, somehow, mirac I have no idea. I don't want to say miraculously, but just weirdly, they would throw it out, and then the next day it would just be right where they left it. And this was a lot of people. Like one literally went as far as my friend. I remember my friend Shana has this crazy story. I just got chills. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe I don't want to say too much, but, but yeah. she, I remember her saying that like she literally, they were having like a little seance in, in like a, a quote unquote haunted theater um, because they were doing like a little op for the paper yeah. or whatever to be like, hey, on Halloween night, like we stayed at the Emerson and had mm -hmm. a seance. And this is what happened. So it was Ouija board gone wrong. Like it started spelling out like really horrible things. Um, and then something super, super gross that like they were just like, we're done. And they, they got super spooked and freaked out and they drove to the lake and they threw it in the lake. And then uh, Shana said that like a few years later when she was moving out of her house, there was like a dried up, like kind of waterlogged Ouija board at the bottom of her closet. And I was like, that's impossible. That's no. And she was like, I shit you not like that is not something that i would make up and she she i remember she said she called her brother or her friend or something and she was like hysterical she was crying she was like what the hell like that is the longest joke running like you yeah. went out there later and found it and put it in my closet and they were like yeah. what are you talking about they were like the ouija board that we threw in the lake is in my closet and i'm like i have no and I had a friend that said that they tried to burn theirs. They tried to like pour gasoline on theirs and burn it and yeah. it wouldn't burn. Um, someone that just like kept repeatedly throwing it in the trash and it just was always in the closet. Uh, friends who said that they had moved to a different state and left a bunch of stuff behind, including the Ouija board. And then when they got to their new place, it was in the closet. Yeah. Like just stuff like where I'm like, why the heck? Like this yeah. is crazy that these people cannot get rid of it. And yeah. so I was like, that's a really weird thing. Yeah. But then the ultimate thing though, is that I, I met some girl who's, she's very, very dark. You know how like sometimes you just meet like, energy. I'm like, I'm like legit, like a little scared right now. Oh, go, well go just, ahead. you know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. We're, Michael, we're good. We good. Yeah, yeah. We're good. Say Michael, we good. Yeah. <laughs> still Michael. here. Still listening. Mm. Um, but uh, she, yeah, this is actually, she was the turning point of when I was like, no, I'm done. Mm -hmm. She was like, oh, I'm, uh, I play it by myself. And I was like, oh, aren't you like not supposed to? And she's like, yeah, you're not supposed to, but you know, whatever. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. But, and she would say that she would taunt it and be like, I bet you can't do this. I bet you can't do that. Be like, oh, I bet you can't blow out this candle. Candle will go out. Oh, I bet you can't reignite it. It would come back. You know, bet. and then she was, and she's like, bet you can't lift this table and, you know, the mm -hmm. table would love it too. Just like crazy stuff. And and then mm -hmm. also she was like, yeah, but you know, I've got like crazy headaches. I see like dark figures at the end of my bed and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, maybe, have you thought about maybe stopping? <laughs> maybe you stop yeah. doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the ultimate, I guess that was a very long winded way yeah, you're to, good, you're to good, get you're good. to the, the ultimate, which was so many other people's stories that I had researched even just within the people that I met. Knew directly. Or yeah. know, or from like people online, online forums and stuff was that the further they would go with it, the more that they had felt compelled to kill themselves. Ooh. And so I was like, wow. And that was kind of like, yeah, I'm done. I'm, and so I feel like that's the big thing is that where you just said about that, that album. Yeah. Is that downward spiral to yeah. eventually where he kills himself. Yeah. And then like Billie Eilish's things about killing yourself. And, yeah. And just these all these things that kind of lead to this sort of despair mm. despair and isolation mm -hmm. i think are just yeah mm -hmm. that's kind of where he wants yeah yeah because the isolation is sort of like the fuse mm -hmm. it's like or it's like the spark that hits the fuse mm -hmm. and then like the despair is what builds as the fuse burns yeah and that's why like i actually you know people are very split on Harry Potter. However, I, again, you know, assessing my own, mm -hmm. you know, my own, myself and mm -hmm. like seeing what I see in the stories. Mm -hmm. There's actually like a beautiful moment that's like really touches on that where uh, it's in the Order of the Phoenix where Harry is being, he's, he's feeling very torn between mm -hmm. like feeling, you know, just feeling since like Voldemort is kind of like part of him and he's kind of mm -hmm. feeling like, what if I turn out just like him? Like I feel like darkness 
a lot more darkness and like what if i can't fight it what if i can't what if i can't mm. do this mm. and he thinks he has to do it all by himself and so he starts isolating himself for, himself from his mm. friends mm -hmm. and harry or, or sorry hermione and ron and everyone's always kind of like hey we'll go with you we'll, we'll help you and he's like no no, I can do it by myself. I can do it by myself. Mm -hmm. but in, and and it only gets him into trouble. And like and the the Dark Lord just basically just messes with him more and more. But it wasn't, I think, until like Luna tells him, she was kind of like, oh, if, if I were the Dark Lord, that's what I would do, is I would try to isolate you from all your friends because you're easier to defeat when you're alone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very, very... Mm -hmm astute mm -hmm. yeah i think that's why for me at least i yeah put so much importance on community friendships mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. staying connected because mm -hmm. i know how i am when i'm not mm -hmm. and and it yeah and it makes me sad i think to think about people who do yeah who don't have who don't have anybody i i totally agree on the on the emphasis on community and, and I and I definitely agree that like the enemy wants us to be isolated mm -hmm. because if you don't have people there who can see you moving in a negative direction and like hold you accountable to a higher standard, like it's just you and whatever sort of tool the enemy is hitting you with. Yeah. It's clear mm -hmm. that the enemy wants you to be isolated. And it's clear that the enemy wants us on the path of despair. Why do people say yes? Why do people move towards isolation in the first place? Like, I'm sure it probably differs by person. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different sort of entry points. But if we were thinking off the top of our heads, like, what sort of tactics does the enemy use to get us to say yes in the first place to start isolating and start that process is what I'm wondering. Mm. Like, what should we be on the lookout for? I think it rewinds all the way back to kind of our first point of mm. unresolved wounds. Mm. I think unresolved wounds is where it's at mm. because just like Christ can be glorious in our wounds, like he can make us strong through our wounds. Mm -hmm. So I think the enemy can also take that and try and make us weak, mm. make us think that we're weak. And so for me, like it, that's it's kind of where it was, where mm. I was kind of like, oh, I was, especially like in high school and everything like dealing with, you know, just like a really, you know, just, you know, really bad home life and just not wanting to, just not, not wanting to be around and, and, and mm -hmm. everything and got, getting into some trouble of my own. And, and I think that for me, I was kind of like saying yes to that temptation just because mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, it, again, it made me feel special. It mm -hmm. made me feel like I don't feel understood and that's, gonna that slowly becoming my identity so even if someone did try to understand me i wouldn't even want it because not being understood makes me feel special mm -hmm. and so again it makes it's that i'm a i'm a special individual mm -hmm. i'm a precious snowflake mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think that a lot of times people want to feel that way mm -hmm. um and like the enemy will use something that reinforces a narrative or like hits you in a wound yeah. that he knows that you have yeah. and reinforces a narrative that like tends towards isolation. So if right. he knows that you like using your case as an example, just playing it back to you, uh, if he knows that you have like a desire to feel special, he can craft or like use somebody or whatever to craft a narrative mm -hmm. through a piece of music or a movie or whatever that says like, yeah, you are special. In fact, you're so special that nobody's ever going to understand you. Yeah. Something along those lines. And, and what's weird is I feel like it's even less of the active desire to feel special. Mm -hmm. It's more, I think that's a byproduct. That's more of a, a, sure, sure. a side thing. But yeah, you know, but, it, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, where it's just, if that's the byproduct of whatever it is mm -hmm. that you're kind of dealing with, then it's kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. well, that's kind of a nice little bonus is that, you know, I'm just, I'm so different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That nobody will ever know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think the sort of, the a sort of anti-venom, I think, yeah. is honestly to be able to, and, and this is, it's kind of like a catch-22, because mm -hmm. then you got to like trust people enough mm -hmm. that you got to be vulnerable enough with somebody to actually kind of let them into those wounds mm -hmm. so that they don't have as much power over you. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why I think, I think therapy is a great thing Mm -hmm. and that I'm glad that there's like less of a stigma about it these days, Mm -hmm. even though there's still, I think there still is even just like, there's a part of me that cringes a little bit when I say that therapy and like, (laughs) right. I definitely was like, I was in counseling. Yeah. I was in counseling. (laughs) (laughs) Counseling sounds better than therapy. (laughs) I have a life coach. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I think that Go, another... I, if you're considering getting counseling, talking to the recorder here for a second, if you're considering getting counseling or seeing a therapist, please do, because yeah. it is so helpful having, uh, just having someone to act as a sounding board. Yeah. Like, you can unpack some of those narratives, and they are trained to, like, help you do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that there's some folks in the Catholic community who are, would be more than willing to, to yeah. help you out and get you and started. The thing is that like people are like, "I'm good." I don't I'm like right. everyone's got shit. Yeah, <laughs> and and it's not even it's just, there's nobody that says that there's like a degree of which that you need therapy. It's just it's like everyone you don't, needs you don't have to be a train wreck. Right, you're yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. like you can be totally for the most part like totally set. Mm-hmm. But to still just kind of have a little healthy ma- maintenance of the mind is just, mm-hmm. I think, just a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I th- and I think that too. Another thing, and this is something that you just, I, you can't really teach anybody except for they just have to do it themselves, is learning to be aware of yourself. Mm. And 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 are you are you bullshitting yourself? Because mm. I I rationalize. A lot. Mm-hmm. I try not to, but um, I know what I am, mm-hmm. and I feel like, again, it's the only reason why I can hear it when other people are doing it is because I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. Is when other people are rationalizing, I hear it, mm-hmm. and so a lot of times I'm going to be like, "Why? Why are you rationalizing right now? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. What are you rationalizing for?" Mm-hmm. Um, because it's usually in favor for something else. Because you're trying to explain away something that you. Maybe, maybe you know you shouldn't be doing, but you, you are. There's like a justification Yeah, process. there's a justification. And so I think that, again, I don't know how to someone to teach somebody self-awareness, mm-hmm. um, but, but that's something that, uh, something that I try to do a lot um, is ask a simple question is, why do I think the way that I think? Mm-hmm. And... You know, why do I think the way I think? Mm-hmm. And and then you start thinking like, well, what what do I think? Mm-hmm. Uh, and how how do I think? Mm-hmm. Well, I think this. Like, I I think that this about I think this about myself, or I mm-hmm. think this about this particular thing, or mm-hmm. I think it's okay to do this certain thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, why why do I think that? Well, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then when you start like tracing back your questions, and and that's where you have yeah, you can discover a lot. But that's where I would say that, like, mm-hmm. that's the the part where you got to be careful of the rationalization. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of yeah, you got to be willing to show up with those questions and answer them honestly. Yeah, like, and and not it, it's just you. It's just you mm-hmm. when you're doing this. So there's no one to impress. Yeah, in in theory, there's no one to impress you. If you can't be honest with yourself, that's a problem. Yeah, um, I follow a similar sort of process and, and and i think honestly like a question that i'll ask is why does that seem true but mm-hmm. but like the first and that sort of goes along mm-hmm. with what you were saying yeah. but i think i think the the very first step that needs to happen is you gotta like you gotta recognize the thought like recognize that it's there have the awareness to like catch the thought right mm-hmm. there and then speak it like you have to speak it yeah. because as long as it stays mm-hmm. between the ears it's this big amorphous thing. Nebulous thing. It can that just shift. Yeah. yeah. And it seems big and scary and like convoluted and hard to understand. But as soon as you spit it out, suddenly it's like, oh. And a lot of times that's what happens with a lot of my thoughts. I'll be like, I have no friends and nobody likes me. And it's like, <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> like, that's nonsense. Yeah. Here's all of the evidence to the contrary, like, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, to be, and also to be careful. And like those moments of, um, oh, hey, 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 bud, <laughs> hey, fella. Um, <laughs> We're playing footsie, footsie on the side chair. Go ahead. Um, yeah, there's <laughs> just, just the one other chair. <laughs> um, but where, and, and even if like the, the package of us, let's going back to music, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. like one that is, you know, overtly dark, 
Mm -hmm. you know, it can still like maybe not be a good time mm -hmm. to listen to. So there's like a little, a little folk band. Um, I remember like this was also like a, a song that I would listen to a lot when I was feeling like, because um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of nice sounding, mm -hmm. but it's literally called Nobody Knows Me at All by this little band called the Weepies. And you'd actually love, love it. It's great. <laughs> the Weepies. Sad um, boy music. <laughs> but it's, it doesn't sound like sad boy music. Mm -hmm. But like the whole thing she's going through and she's just kind of like, um, you know, all these scenarios and finishing it up with nobody knows me at all. Mm -hmm. And then there's like, I've got lots of friends. Yes, but then again, nobody knows me at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and it's like a, it's a neat little song. Mm -hmm. But... I have to also be careful that I'm like, if I am actually feeling like that, mm -hmm. where old me would love to just be like, I'm going to fire up all of that music yeah. so that I can reinforce. I'm going to sit in my room with the lights off. Yeah. yeah. And just be like, yeah, that's right. And you news me. <laughs> but then, but I'm like, ah, probably not the best thing. Mm -hmm. at, at this point, like probably not listening to anything is probably the best thing. Mm -hmm. um, and just, Yeah doing something else <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just um and, and not to like stuff it mm -hmm. but but to kind of mm -hmm. be like all right well i'm going to be productive with my thought processes and my in my time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and then write my own sad boy music. <laughs> yeah 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 because that's that's another thing i actually kind of wanted to touch on is that like probably a lot of people would accuse me of having very well sad, sad and down music. music yeah yeah and and i'm like well yeah it's not like you know flag wavingly like jump up and down happy go lucky yeah but um, there's but, always hope, though, mm -hmm. that it's never meant to be isolating. It's mm -hmm. never meant, it's not, the intention of my music is not ever to just solely be depressing. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. to be like, hey, I'm sharing, I'm sharing a part of what I've gone through yeah. with others. And with, and, and I think that what's good is like if other people can resonate and they, they're kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, you went into that heartache with me mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of light though at the end mm -hmm. that that's that's always to me something that's really beautiful that I've been able to see mm -hmm. there's like would you say that there's like a push and pull where there's like some darkness but like that light is trying to break through and you feel those two forces like there's there's darkness there's a fall mm -hmm. and then there's hope for redemption within yeah. the song as well yeah yeah and and it's always it's a struggle sometimes because sometimes i'm kind of like i don't know how do you introduce this without it being like deus ex machina and then everything was fine at right. the end exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's and, and that's the thing that's a struggle the struggle is like you know as yeah. an artist and as someone who writes from you know personal experiences where a lot of times that's you know music comes from you know it can it can come from a wounded place mm -hmm. um but again, like Christ redeemed the world with his wounds. Mm -hmm. And, but it's just, I think the, the, our jobs as our job as an artist is to, to not, to not, um, celebrate the brokenness mm -hmm. without the redemption factor of it. Mm -hmm. Because it's just kind of like, if we're just going to wallow, then mm -hmm. it's, and sometimes it's hard to not just have, all right, this is just a thing that happened to me without trying to force right. something peachy mm -hmm. um yeah because that just comes across as in, in disingenuine, disingenuine and, and, and fake and, and exactly yeah. um so 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 it's hard um because like i have this <laughs> song um that i have not finished yet and again i struggle with being like ah is that even a song that yeah yeah, yeah. um uh clown where a lot, okay. i was in a, a space where i was kind of like man i just feel like i where, where I'm kind of like, no one really knows who mm -hmm. I am. I think that sometimes, especially in like big, large situations that I'm like, people see me as one thing. Mm. And then it's hard to kind of break out of that. It's what, like a box. Yeah. yeah. And so, and just the whole thing is just about being like, you know, yeah, this basically this clown. Mm. And is and one of the lines is um, like like a cheap wine. He can be a good time, but stays on the bottom shelf. And then it all becomes clear that he's made a career out of making a fool of himself. Mm. And I'm like, to me, I'm like, ooh, I like where this is going. But then I'm like, 
how do you kind of yeah you know how do you because you're, you're you're heading in a really good direction right now and I, I like a thought that I had a second ago was like if a song if a song is aiming exclusively down mm-hmm. it's probably not something that's worth like listening to for mm-hmm. your own mental and spiritual health right and so what you're wrestling but like at the same time how do you balance being real about the story and like speaking the truth right and like speaking to people's hearts and expressing your heart in a way that's like true and authentic how do you go down but then also leave room for the up to come in yeah as well so how do you take a line like that which is is gut wrenching and then add some sort of up or add something right. yeah add and some maybe, sort of glimmer and a lot of things that a lot of times that i don't really I've only really just now started thinking about this is Mm -hmm. that like, wow, I guess not every song that I write, I need to put out. (laughs) A lot of times I think that I wrote a new song. I got to put it out. And I'm like, (laughs) I don't have to. Um, In In that voice, right? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I wrote a new song. I wrote a song. (laughs) But I think that I get excited about me like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to share it. Yeah. But then, but that's discernment as well. of like, Mm -hmm. Should it? Should I? Does yeah. this? Should it? Is this, this for everybody or is this for me? Yeah. Um. And this was this just a way to you know get because I'm sure that you wouldn't share everything in your journal Mm-mm. with everyone. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, oh, wow, hey, so hey, juicy hey, too. hey, bud, hey, <laughs> bud, hey, uh, cookie recipe. Dear diary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, burn, yeah, yeah. Is that your burn book? <laughs> No, yeah, that's right. It's Mean Girls. Patrick mean girls. is a ugly. <laughs> <laughs> on Thursdays, we go to party foul. On Thursdays, on we, Thursday go we go to party foul. Stop trying to make you party foul a thing. <laughs> Stop trying to make Caddy B's a thing. <laughs> go over to yeah. Captain D's. You can't sit with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Like, from, from my own creative perspective like something that i'm learning to do now is like i I just really want to be conscious about what i'm putting out there uh if if a song goes to a dark place i want to like bring god into the equation yeah where hey if 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 i'm hurt and eat like regardless of whether or not all i feel is hurt and darkness and sadness. I want to invite God into that space. Yes. So yeah. like, hey God, this sucks. I've got plenty of songs that are just God, this sucks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dude, a hundred percent. I'd say that like a lot of my songs are, are God, just God, this, this sucks. sucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my favorite God, this sucks song, song God, this sucks song is uh, Snowman. Yeah. Because that is something uh, arguably that people say that's my most depressing song, but also like one of my most like beautiful songs or whatever. Is God mentioned in that song? Did no. you say God? Okay, gotcha. No, no, no. I don't mention God in any of my songs, but like if you, it's, if, the, it, he's there. Okay. <laughs> if you kind of read between the lines, like he's. How he's is, how there. is he there? Like maybe, so, I'm curious. Um, when I'm writing, mm-hmm. like he's usually a, in, like in my thoughts. Okay. In like um in and that sounds really esoteric. But like he he like I think about him. <laughs> so I wrote the song called Go Yourself. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> like, wait, how was that? As oh he's there. <laughs> as it saith in the gospel of Mark, Jesus yeah. on the Sermon of the Mount said, Go yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um no, it's because I think that a lot of times when I do write it is I feel like it I'm talking to him. Okay. And that's and and I would say that, like, like my, my song "The Journey" or "The Road." Wow, a lot of songs about like traveling, mm-hmm. and even like "Scarecrow." Made. I mean, it's just. I mean, like the song "Made," for example. Like, it's. I'm just kind of positing all these things and things mm-hmm. that we chase in life, and mm-hmm. um, uh, and how thinking that I was, they were just gonna. It's what I wanted, or it's gonna make me happy. But mm-hmm. basically, at the end of the. It's just kind of basically the course is kind of like there. It's nothing wrong with living, enjoying finer things. Mm. Nothing wrong with working harder, spreading out your wings. But even if I owned the moon and stars and to the world I held the keys, I still don't think that I would be happy. 
I guess I was made for more than these. Mm. And so I'm, you don't say God's name. But no, but it's there's like, the acknowledgement I was made. Yes. Yeah. And so, and it's 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 hard when, especially when you're talking to Christian people or Catholic people, it's like, oh, so do you like great Christian music? I'm like, <laughs> I don't not, but not in the way that you're talking about. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not a Christian artist. Something that I always believe in, which is, because it's something that I, I, I don't like to do either, or like, because sometimes people are like, oh, so you're kind of like hiding the message. I'm like, no, I'm not hiding anything. And I'm not trying to do, it's, Mm-hmm. I think that if we are formed in our faith mm-hmm. and if hopefully if like if Christ is at the center of our life, that the hope is that whatever we're creating is going to reflect that no matter what. And that like yeah. the happy byproduct of that is going to, and it's like, I, I love music that's not about Christ, but informed by Christ. Yes. Where, because yes. then people are like, oh, Mumford and Sons is, it must be this album. It's, it's a Christian album. But they're like, we didn't write a Christian album. But like, they, they're very influenced by, I guess, their Christian roots and stuff. But mm-hmm. they're, which is where a lot of that comes from. But mm-hmm. they're like, we weren't trying to hide and be like this covert, like, but we're people, informed by but, our Christianity. But just people love to put things in boxes, they mm-hmm. love it. Mm-hmm. They just have to try to understand mm-hmm. something. And so it's, um, so I think, and that's what I feel like the beauty about, the beauty of like Tolkien and, and why I think that every, like the Lord of the Rings is like a universally loved story. Mm-hmm. It's because it speaks to a universal truth. Mm-hmm. Because Tolkien wasn't like, I, I'm, I'm, I made this after, you know, my Catholic faith or whatever. It's just, he was, he was also, he spoke out about this as well, of just being like, oh, like I'm, I'm informed by my faith mm-hmm. and you're probably, you're going to see that mm-hmm. all over this world, mm-hmm. but this is, this is a fantasy. This is a story. Mm-hmm. And, um, and definitely there are, yeah, there are just so many parallels to our faith and, and, and Christ and, and his teachings and everything. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think that people, as much as they, they're attracted to, beautiful they're also attracted to true whether they like know it or not Mm -hmm. that's why sometimes filmmakers and musicians accidentally stumble upon something where where you can be like wow this is like a really catholic message this is a catholic movie Mm -hmm. and by accident because they're like oh how, how about this story let's look um and i don't know if you saw a quiet place but i did see a quiet place i was just like both of them it's like a pretty catholic movie um in in the, the ending sense, of the first one oh my god every time oh, oh so good <laughs> and then like in something where i was just so surprised because i remember people were i remember like it was oscar buzz and i think it was like the only thing i think brie larson did a good job in like she like won an oscar for this movie called room okay and it's about this girl who gets kidnapped and lives in like a dun like a basement for, and it's like a super like the premise is very dark mm-hmm. and then like this guy like comes down and has his way with her for however long and then she has this essentially this rape baby and this room is all this kid knows okay and he's like six or seven or something mm-hmm. and he just knows nothing of the outside world but then like she and like in the the kid devise a plan to like get out and he ends up being her salvation essentially like he ends up being the thing that actually gets her out and she's just kind of like oh i wouldn't you know i wouldn't trade him for anything like he's he's like everything to me Mm -hmm. and maybe a jesus and mary parallel well i I mean see i didn't even think about that i was just like regardless of the circumstance of how he was born because i feel like there's just so many you know so many things are like oh that was a horrible thing what horrible thing because that's always the the thing is kind of like god can work you know, it's just kind of, yeah. you know, God, you know, God can work th- through the the worst situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And had that been just like, a, a, and it was so interesting to me how like so many like very left people were pra- praised the movie as well as being like mm-hmm. such a great movie. And I'm like, you do realize this is about a woman who had a rape baby mm-hmm. who like is in love with this baby and this baby ends up being like her salvation. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like just we want to make sure that we're all tracking here. Right, right, right. And so... 
And, but the thing is, is that like, I mean, it, and it was a great film and, mm-hmm. and even it was weirdly universally, uh, like, I think, uh, applauded. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, see, I think that people are attracted to things that even they're not even sure why, but I mean, it was mm-hmm. a great story and they're kind of like, mm-hmm. it was true. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like. Um, people are attracted to the good, true, and beautiful. And I think that's what artists are, the, that's their job, is to mm-hmm. make things that are good, true, and beautiful. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they accidentally do it. Mm-hmm. And you're just, I mean, I saw Top Gun the other day, and I was like, you know what? That was a good movie. Was it, it, was, good, true, and, was it good, true, and beautiful? I think so. Okay. Yeah. I heard people cried for the new Top Gun. I mean, there are moments where I'm like, I don't cry in movies, but yeah. I heard people cry during the movies. And so, but there were moments where I was like, okay, I can see why people would cry during this movie. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times people are like... I can see why these idiots are yeah, crying. Yeah, no, because <laughs> other times I would be, I would, and, and I would not understand where I'm like, mm-hmm. how do you cry during this movie? And then sometimes it's very basic. It's very almost kind of like, oh, you're just, it's kind of like a jump scare. Like when, it, when it's a jump scare, you didn't earn it. And you're kind of like, that was cheap. You knew that you were trying to scare us. So when people right. are like, oh my God, I cried at the notebook. When I watched the notebook and I was like, well, this is the part I'm supposed to cry at, but it's yeah. not, I'm not, it's not that sad. You haven't earned it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And no tears like, for this you. This is trying to be emotionally manipulative and it's not working on me. So, I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. Whereas like Top Gun, I was kind of like, okay, there were some actually, there were some moments in there where mm-hmm. that was actually really well done. And I think. And it's I, not like a, the most amazing movie ever, but I was kind of like, mm-hmm. it was just nice to see a movie that I was like, okay, this was like. Just, you know, an entertaining movie, but then also one that, you know, was uplifting as well. Mm-hmm. Not that every movie has to be, but, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I think uplifting is, is our responsibility as artists and especially as Catholic artists. Mm-hmm. You mentioned putting... You mentioned putting folks in a box earlier, like folks putting different genres in a box earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that this will probably be, this will probably be my last thought. I think folks have a tendency to not only put genres in a box, but God in a box as well. Like if this is going to be a piece of music that's informed by my faith, then it needs to be, God, you're so good. Yep. God, you're so very good. God, I love you. You are yeah. so good. Yeah, exactly. But like, how could God? How could God work in a space? Like, I want to see someone take like the downward spiral by Nine Inch Nails and do a retelling of that story. Yeah. And like, take each chapter and invite God into the space and like aim it upwards, aim it so it's uplifting. But like, all like, don't lose the darkness. Mm-hmm. But like aim it in an upwards direction. I think yeah. that's our responsibility as artists. And I think yeah. a lot of it has to do with the humility in which we approach the work as well. Being yeah. like, listen, God, part of this is going to be my grit and the gifts that you've given me. But I also yeah. know like I'm, I'm a vessel at the end of the day. Yeah. Like we're vessels. Just the broken ass conduit. <laughs> <laughs> that broken ass conduit. The, the broken ass conduit. That's I don't know. Like what, what, Andrew and I joke about that all the time. What are your thoughts on that? Any, no, I, any final ideas? Yeah, no, I think that's a good final thought is that, yeah, we do put, that we should not put God in a box. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, like, I don't know why we're so always so tempted to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, and just to kind of, again, just like the awareness of what we're doing is mm-hmm. kind of a big thing. And, and also kind of living with the acceptance that, not everyone's going to get, especially as an artist, what we're trying to do. And maybe mm-hmm. we're misreading something that another artist tried to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, obviously there are some, that, you know, the Nine Inch Nails. That, so that is a complete album dedicated to just <laughs> literally called, you know, this downward spiral. And, the, and then, you know, so there are things that, again, that are much more overt. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, also to, to be like, because I'm a huge fan of satire mm-hmm. and dark comedy as well. And mm-hmm. I've got a few of those songs too that, that can also, in, in, in maybe uplifting is not the word, mm-hmm. but I like things that can make you think in terms of just being like, it's almost like a negative reinforcement. Okay. <laughs> of, of, uh, cause I know that's happened for me at least before, like listening to a song or watching something where I'm like, 
ugh. Like, uh, I'm not advocating that people watch Black Mirror or whatever, but it's like a Black Mirror episode where you're kind of like, oh, jeez. Like, that was that was a lot. Like, that okay. episode where, like, um, she's, uh, like, I'm going off a tangent now. You're good. But, you're like, good. Um, kind of, the, like, live in that world where everyone's rating each other. And, like, you oh, have okay. to rate everybody because she's trying to get, like, a good rating so she can get mm-hmm. this apartment that she really wants. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, this mm-hmm. is terrible that this mm-hmm. is basically now. Mm-hmm. And just, like, things like that that kind of stick with me and other mm-hmm. things where I'm just kind of like, I just don't do social media anymore. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, it, largely, at least in my life, it's been a lot yeah. better. And yeah, so, yeah. so it's kind of like... Was that an uplifting episode? Mm-hmm. No, but it was. It, mm-hmm. it hit on something mm-hmm. that was. It, it was true, mm-hmm. and maybe it was a little bit of an ugly truth. But it was kind of like, oh, but that was that was that was true. Mm-hmm. And so, I think that. Um, but but again, I, I guess again, I'm just being tangential. Yeah, I I think, and I'm actually I do have one more thought, and I'm glad <laughs> that you brought it back around to that, like sort of. Mm-hmm. Just like we need to have the awareness, and you correct me if I'm like misspeaking here, but like just as we need to have the awareness of what sort of thoughts are kicking around up here, we need to exercise that same degree of scrutiny on what we're putting into our brain in the first place. Like, why am I drawn to this? Mm -hmm. What is this telling me? Like, what am I getting from this? Like, for example... Uh, I know we keep coming back to Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Actually, you know what? No, I won't. I won't use Nine Inch Nails this time. Radiohead's a good example. That's actually one that I'm like really split on. And so, if, if I was folks... never a big Radiohead fan, but really, no. Okay. Just high and dry. I like that song. It's a good song. <laughs> it's a great song. Uh, there's another one on that record called Fake Plastic Trees that is one of my favorite songs of all time. Okay. Such a good song. But uh, I I'm so split on it because it's not as overtly dark as Nine Inch Nails, I would say, or Queens of the Stone Age or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. It's not overtly uplifting either. A lot of it is very ambiguous and sort of just moody in this sort of dark middle space. Yeah. And I also question my motives. Like, it's very interesting sonically, I think. Yeah. But I also question my motives like, do I really like Radiohead or do I just <laughs> like saying that I like Radiohead? Uh, you know, that yes, might be, that might be being too hard on myself. Too. Yeah. No. But that sort of process is what needs to happen when we're right. looking at movies, and, music, et cetera. And, and it's crazy because, and I think that like as sometimes too, I feel like, yeah, if you're good at, in a good headspace or you're just not in, and you can really, with your own conscious, kind of be like, yeah, no, I think this is fine. Because sometimes I'm like, ah, maybe just it ain't that deep. Mm-hmm. Um, where I, so maybe sometimes it is just kind of like, oh, the song of our people. Uh, <laughs> very, because, I mean, growing up on Irish folk music, mm-hmm. that shit is dark. I mean, it's just, it's very, it's very sad. Mm-hmm. But it's like beautiful. It's haunting and beautiful. Like mm-hmm. I love this one song called The Immigrant's Daughter. It's literally all about them trying to move to America and everyone gets like sick on the boat and dies and she like all of her par- like her parents are dead and her brothers are dead and she's just like left alone on the boat to go to this new land by herself. But it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. And part of me was I'm just like where does that fit in? Because mm-hmm. then I'm like but it's just kind of like oh it's just it's a tale. It's just a, it's a tale of mm-hmm. It's a, it's a story of what happened. It's an, a recounting of what happened. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's a lot of history in general. Because mm-hmm. then it's kind of like, oh, do we just not learn things because it's unpleasant? Mm-hmm. But and I think that's a, another realm. I think that's something different, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but it can become the same. And that's why I think it all just comes down to discernment and awareness mm-hmm. of like where you're at. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because for one person, that song could be like healing and cathartic yeah maybe someone who's moved along that awareness path a little bit further and is able to hold something like that with the right degree of awareness to say like this is not saying anything about me this is not defining me permanently and maybe that's it it's like yeah less about you and more about it's external yeah but for and again i'm I'm big on intentionality Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like is the intention was that do i think 
you know, and again, it's all subjective, the intention behind this song was to purposefully to try to make me feel bad or to, to depress me, or it was the mm. intentionality to tell a story mm -hmm. or they're, they're telling their story and then I'm interpreting it a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I mean, it, to beat a dead horse, it's just all that like discern, just discerning and, and being aware of mm -hmm. where you're at. Mm -hmm. um, and something that I, uh, it was funny that, um, and I used to be like this, and it was funny, I, I was talking about this with David um, uh, the other day, is something that changed the way that I think, changed mm -hmm. my life, is I remember in college, it was like one such a thing where I was kind of like, oh, I want to I wanna check out this one thing, but like, I don't know, like blah, blah, blah. It's, I, I, I knew it wasn't going to be good for me. Sure. But I was like, I just want to, I don't know, but I just, I just want to see what it's all about. I want to see what it's like. Sure. And I remember my friend dropped a bomb on me and she was just like, well, you know what it says? Uh, I can't remember the actual verses, but she's like in the book of Sirach is the knowledge of evil is not wisdom. Mm. And I was like, uh, <laughs> crap. <laughs> and so a lot of times when people are like, oh, have you seen this or have you done this? Or have you been to this place? And I'm like, no. I don't need to see that, or I don't need to go there, or I don't need to, like, mm -hmm. I know, I know mm -hmm. what's, what it is. Like, yeah. I know what's going to happen. Yeah, 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 I don't need to go to just check it out, um, mm -hmm. or I don't need to see it just to check it out. Like, like what, and again, attentionality. Like, one of my friends was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to see Fifty Shades. And I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. Like, you know. You know what's in there. You, I mean, like, and the intentionality, it's not like it's a, oh, it's a movie that happens to have, sex in it or whatever but it's like this this is a movie about sex purpose yeah. is that this is about dominate like this <laughs> like depraved sex right They're like i just wanted to see you know what it's all about and i'm like you know what it's about <laughs> right right so right. i was like i'm not your dad but like you go you go right ahead um i mean i would prefer you don't but mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm yeah i'm not your dad i'm not gonna i can't stop you i feel the same way about like the saw franchise I was yeah. on the fence for a little bit Yeah, because earlier in the year I was thinking like, you know, I am scared of scary movies. Maybe it's a fear that I need to get over. Maybe I just need to force myself through these things. Nope. And yeah, I, you, you don't, you don't need that stuff in your brain. Like we said at no. the beginning, like no. that's, there's I nothing redeeming about that. After, Cause I was again, like back in the day I was a huge horror movie fan. Yeah. And I, I, I actually, I mean, it's it's grotesque, but I saw one was kind of brilliant a little bit. Um, I think I think the premise is brilliant. Yeah, that premise at age ten or so. It Did kept you actually me, see it? I didn't see it. Oh. What? Okay, so deep deep cut here. No pun intended. But <laughs> uh, when cut, saw your leg off. Hey, cheers, bud. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just go like oh. that? <laughs> So we couldn't afford an actual buzzsaw. We got this yeah. one that goes. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's gonna take forever. <laughs> uh, so actually, you just have to chew your leg up. When I was when I was ten or eleven, uh, my my parents had this website that they would reference, and that's another good piece of advice too. Like if you're kind of split on something, go find like plugged in. Plugged in online was the source that my parents always went to. And I think it's still solid and they're still publishing content today. They'll review stuff from like, I think, I don't think it's Catholic. I think it's a Christian perspective, but they'll offer, hey, this is our take on the new Maroon 5 record. Lots of sexual innuendos, probably give it a pass. Stuff mm -hmm. like that. And that's been really, really useful. But in the, at the time, at age 11 or so, I was going on there and reading movie reviews and I'd, I would always skip right to the violent content section just so I could read about all the ways that people got messed up in the movie. <laughs> so it was like in some way you were just doing this. Right. I was being like, ah, out there. I don't know. You're just imagining it. Yeah. Instead of seeing it. <laughs> and so I read the review for Saw and I was like, that premise kept me up for weeks. I was like, oh, really? if I, if I was in that situation, which I'm clearly going to be in at some point, <laughs> I need to have this decision made up. What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> I just need to be a good person because Saw only kidnaps bad people. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey dad, am I a good person? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean that, I will say that had a twist that I did not see coming. 
which was... I have seen the ending. Yeah. yeah. I was just like, dude, the dead guy in the middle of the floor was him the whole time. And then he slams the door. He's like, Whoa, game, game over. Game over. Yeah. <laughs> but I saw this. I stopped at the second one. Even in, it like as, as a youngster, I was like, yeah, no, like that, that. I feel gross. I feel icky. Like, yeah, I saw Saw two, and I was like, I think this is where my Saw journey ends. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, there's like a key or something that like, at the bottom of a pit of needles, Ugh, and so yeah. like this chick gets like thrown into this pit of needles. She's digging for this, key. <laughs> yeah, like the syringes. Yeah, and I was like, I, and I don't remember anything else in that whole movie. Yeah, and I remember that part. Because yeah. it was so disturbing that I was like, huh, huh. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, oh, yeah. why am I watching this? I'm cringing over here. Because I'm just like, I'm just a cr- <laughs> if you're cringing and just being like, oh God, why? And you can't even look. I'm like, you got to ask yourself, why are you watching it? Mm-hmm. And I remember asking myself, I'm like, why did I watch that? Mm-hmm. This, this, I think, actually ties into sort of a central theme that we've been running with Mm -hmm. and like I think a a distinguishing factor if you're trying to discern whether whether it's a thought of yours whether it's a piece of content somebody else created or a piece of content that you made Mm -hmm. a deciding factor or an indicator of which side of the fence it lands on is and I think we said this earlier like is the darkness the focal point? Mm-hmm. Is it just about the darkness? Because if it's just about the darkness and nothing else, probably not something you need in your mind. Versus Saving Private Ryan. Mm-hmm. Great movie. Yeah. Fantastic piece of art. Yeah. Very violent. Yeah. But it's a story like that. Uh, you've seen it, obviously. Oh, yeah. So you, I, yeah, the I end I was like scene, child in the theaters. <laughs> the end scene with Tom Hanks and the pistol. Do you know the part I that I'm thinking seen of? It in so long. Okay, I'm I'm assuming that the majority of folks here have seen it. Yeah, at the very end of this movie, uh, Tom Hanks has watched like a bunch. He's 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 the head of a platoon or like head yeah. of an, a company or something, and he's watched a bunch of his guys die. They're in this city that's getting attacked by Germans and they're trying to hold out until they get reinforcements from the allies and it looks really, really bad. Like they keep, they're losing guys left and right. He's committed to bringing home Matt Damon, who is saving Matt Damon, who is Private Ryan. They're losing guys. The Germans are closing in. The Germans are, 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 and they outnumber them and they have way more firepower as well. And Tom Hanks gets wounded, but down to the last minute of his life, he's like, this tank is off in the distance and it's approaching him and he doesn't have his main gun anymore. He pulls his sidearm out like this pistol and he just like, he's shaking, but he like keeps plinking off rounds oh, at the yes. tank. You I know, remember like, this. You remember that part? And I remember like, as, cause I saw it when I was so young Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I didn't get it. So I was like, what does he think he's going to do? I was like, that gun is not going to do anything. That it wasn't the point. That, that scene gets me every time. I cry every time at that part. Oh, man. I need to see that again. It's I such a good movie. It's so good in so long. Yeah. Um, and then there's the antithesis of that where... Did you ever see The Mist? Stephen King's The Mist? I've seen parts of it. So and I know the ending. I'm right... Or like yeah. again, like kind of a weirdly kind of a fan because like the monsters or whatever they attack everyone at this grocery store. And yeah, yeah. Everything looks lost, and then in a moment of what seems like sacrifice. Yeah. Where he's like kills his son and the lady and like this other like this other people like because he almost he's like only mercy bullets. kill. Yeah. He's like mercy killing because he's like you know I'd rather have like kill y'all <laughs> than have you be like monster food. Yeah. And suffer, and then military rolls through and shows that they beat all the monsters like literally two seconds after he shot everybody and then it just shows that they're like the monsters have been defeated and everything's fine and i was like oh my gosh what (laughs) the hell like twist ending and then it ends and i'm like 
What? <laughs> so they would have been fine if he held out for like literally two more seconds. Right. And I'm like, what did I learn? What am I learning from this? Right. It's just like life just sucks. <laughs> uh, and even if you're trying to do the right thing, it's not going to work out. Yeah. So, and that is an example of a movie that I left the theater being like, <gasps> like gross 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 yeah yeah we're like saving private ryan mm -hmm. which not in a like kind of, it, it's different mm -hmm. so different obviously but in a similar fashion like mm -hmm. sacrificing yourself yep. yep um and then how it's again there's that that redemptive quality to it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, not to say that uh, the mist wasn't fun at parts, but uh, <laughs> but in the end, you're like, what? What? <laughs> what? Why did I just? Sit Why did this happen? Uh, oh dude. man, so Patrick, good. so good having you on the show, dude. Man. Thanks for this is a really um, good conversation. chatting with me. It was a great conversation. I clearly, yeah. I feel like we could go <laughs> another hour and a half. Ever. <laughs> it's gonna be a this mini series. And that concludes this month's episode of the Fraternus Forge podcast. Thank you again so much for listening. Again, send those ideas for future episodes to me at fraternusforge at gmail.com. And as promised, here is our first official, unofficial, <laughs> sponsored ad on the Fraternus Forge podcast. Lovely. Exactly. Well, hopefully you get to hear all the bubbles going down my throat while I drink this spinger of sparkling water with real squeeze fruit. That is uh, that is not our... I'm going to lean over to the task cam one more time. Sponsored by <laughs> Spindrift. Spindrift. You know I, where the flavor's coming from. Does it say that on there? No, but I. that's what I say. Because, you know, like all the other, like LaCroix and those are the yeah. sparkling waters, they just... You just you don't know how it tastes like anything. It's mm. it's got zero calories, zero everything, zero ingredients, but it's like zero idea where the, what is the yeah, flavor. Yeah, it's like yeah. essence with grapefruit, and I'm like so yeah, the grapefruit walk by and sneeze on it, and then <laughs> I don't know, I have no idea, but there's natural flavor in it, and yeah, yeah, I don't know. What does all that mean? Talk about like the <laughs> anal gland of a beaver, like the flavoring <laughs> stuff with that, which is like for sure, like look it up, it's a thing. <laughs> So Spindrift, for all you all listening, is they use real fruit juice, but like very trace amounts. So right. it's five whole calories for anyone who cares. Um, the but day, it's the real day, raspberry and real lime. The day that they make an anal gland of beaver flavor LaCroix, I will be the first person oh, in line to buy it. Just for the novelty of it. It's sort of like <laughs> dead fish lying. Like we were talking they're about it. <laughs> they just stop lying about what it is. They're like, it's grapefruit. They're like, it's, no. That's, the way we flavor it is with the anal gland of a beaver. It's it's beaver anal gland flavor. <laughs> Have that fun. Is, that is a phrase I did not expect to hear at any point in my life. Oh, well, you're welcome. Now it's maybe, maybe on it's your podcast if you, don't, if you don't cut it out. <laughs> we're totally not going to. Okay, good.